All right, so today I want to do something that not many people can actually do. I want to look inside of my female ball pythons to where I can actually count the number of eggs before they lay the eggs. And I can actually see what size they are and how they're coming along in the breeding season. And you might be wondering how I can actually do that. And I do that with an ultrasound. When I first started in ball pythons, I bought an ultrasound pretty much the first year when I started because a lot of people that were breeding a lot of snakes used an ultrasound quite a bit and essentially what the ultrasound does is you can actually look inside and you can freeze the frame and actually take a measurement of the eggs and you can count the number of eggs before the ball python lays them and some people let me tell you they are absolutely obsessed when it comes to ultrasounds I've actually seen some big breeders, they'll ultrasound all their females on a continual basis all the way through the breeding season. A lot of people won't pair up their snakes until the follicles, the immature eggs, are at least 10 millimeters. And then they'll pair them up for the first time and then they'll wait and they'll keep ultrasounding their females and then pair them up for a second time when the follicles reach 20 millimeters. And again, at 30 millimeters, I've seen some people do it again at 40 or 45 millimeters, pretty much pairing up four times. And essentially what I do is I just randomly take my males and I pair them up with my females pretty much for three days at a time, once a month for four months in a row during the breeding season. I don't really even look at the follicles and it's, it's, it's kind of interesting. When I first started out, I used to use the ultrasound quite a bit and I hardly ever use it anymore. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting tool. As a matter of fact, last year I was kind of picking up my ultrasound a little bit more and I looked at a bunch of my females and to my my surprise some of those females had follicles that were like 15 maybe 20 millimeters in the middle of the breeding season and they didn't actually lay eggs so sometimes you can have a female that starts developing those immature eggs and every now and then you'll get a, a female ball python that'll reabsorb those follicles and won't actually produce the eggs and this year I didn't really I haven't done any ultrasound at all in any of my ball pythons so what I want to do is I want to look at some of my big females that haven't been eating in quite a while that have been really big and they're really huge it looks like they're full of eggs so I want to go in there with the ultrasound and take a look at some of these eggs I'll bring you along for a ride and maybe we can even count the number of eggs before the ball python lays them which would be pretty awesome all right, so here's my setup. Take a look at this tiny little ultrasound. It actually fits in a little, it's almost like a laptop case that it fits in. It folds up just like a laptop, only the screen is super small. Look at how big that screen is. It's like a little mini laptop and it works pretty awesome. And there's only just a couple buttons that I really use on here as far as uh, taking the measurements and just looking at the follicles. And then if you buy one of these, you want to make sure you get the linear probe, the one that is straight. They actually have a curved probe and a bunch of different probes. And I heard for ball pythons, you definitely want the linear probe. And then I actually just ordered a whole bunch of this electro gel. Look at this big old bottle. I ordered like five or six of these. I didn't realize they were so huge. That's going to be enough gel to last me for years, which is kind of crazy. So what I want to do is I definitely want to look at some of these het caramels over here. These are really super big females that are, they, have, they haven't eaten in a long time, and look at how big they are. And I actually bred my bamboo lesser to, to these girls. Half the offspring will come out bamboo, half will come out as lesser, and she's looking really super huge, like she has a lot of eggs in there. I definitely wanna see if the eggs are coming along and how big those follicles are. I'm thinking I might get eggs here maybe in the next month or so, which would be pretty awesome. It's almost time for some of these girls to start out. Ovulating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that tub and put it out here and crank up this ultrasound. Alright, so this is always the tricky part, trying to show you the ultrasound screen and show you the snake where I'm ultrasounding at the same time. So we'll see if this will actually work to where you can see both things. And essentially what you do is you actually see right on the ultrasound now, there's really nothing on here. As a matter of fact, if you actually try to rub anything on the probe, the probe doesn't work without any gel. You definitely need some gel. And as soon as you put the gel on the probe, you can definitely see that it works right across the screen. You definitely need a lot of gel on the probe 
to really get the ultrasound to work, which is kind of weird that it doesn't work without any gel. And then usually on the snake, you'll come down about a third from the tail. So essentially what I do is I kind of look at the middle of the snake and then go a little bit further down. And then what I do is sometimes it can be <laughs> a little bit challenging. Let me tell you, to try to get the right angle at the right spot on the snake. Sometimes I hit it right off the bat and sometimes it's really hard. You kind of go right along the spine and then you go kind of back and forth right along the spine, right about there. And the hard part is trying to interpret what you're seeing on the screen. And then the, even the harder part is, is when the snake just gets up and just kind of takes off and starts running. And then you usually have to either try to hold the snake or try to, you know, it, it can be a little bit difficult with the snake running like that. But, and then you kind of see in here, there's, it's it can be really confusing unless you actually see what you're looking for. All right, so take a look at that. It is definitely a technique to try to see the eggs in here. <laughs> Let me tell you, it can be pretty challenging, but essentially what it is, is it's this round thing right here and right here. You can see a couple eggs right there. So this girl's come along pretty nicely as far as developing some eggs. And sometimes it really depends on the angle that you hold the probe. So then what I do is I freeze it right there. And then I can come in here if I can remember how I used to do it. Let's see, I would go to general and then to the end. The, there's a set button that is the same as enter that you have to use. And then you go up to, let's see if I can remember how I used to do this. Distance, yes. <laughs> and then you go from the top, you hit set. Come down to the bottom, hit set again. And then you actually do the length and the width and it gives you an average too, which is pretty awesome. This girl is pretty well along. So she's coming in right at 18 millimeters, 17 millimeters. So she's at 17.6 millimeters, pretty good. Okay, so I pulled up another het caramel female. I want to take a look at this one too to see where she's at. She's been off of food for about a month now. So I'm going to unfreeze this, wipe the probe off, put some more gel on it, and we'll take a look at this girl. And it's kind of interesting looking at the ultrasound and kind of what's going on inside the snakes. Oh, uh, it's always kind of tricky to figure out where exactly to look to. Essentially what you have to do is you have to go right by the spine and then kind of come down at an angle. And if you lose the gel in your probe, it can be kind of tricky. A lot of times you have to go back and add more gel to the probe. This girl, I don't know. She almost looks like... Makes me wonder if I want to keep pairing up on some of these if they're too small. Okay, so this girl, I don't think she's gonna go. I'm pretty sure this is a little follicle right here. This, these tiny little dark spots right up in here. They don't even look like they're even 10 millimeters, which is kind of a bummer. Like if I freeze that one, I'm pretty sure it's this right here. I don't think those are even 10 millimeters. Six point six. Uh, <laughs> this girl's just fasting. She is not gonna go. Average is seven point two. That's a bummer on this girl. I don't think she's gonna lay eggs. Well, it looks like the other one might lay some eggs. All right, so I want to try one of my big lemon blast females and see what she looks like. Hopefully, we'll get some bigger follicles on some of these females. It's making me a little nervous not seeing any real big follicles kind of this late in the season. So let's take a look at this girl, about a third of the way up here, kind of right along the spine. We'll take a look. 
So this girl, it's, let me tell you, it's, it's kind of tricky to actually do. So I, th that's the follicle right there. You can see a couple of them right there. And the funny thing is, is if you actually look at this follicle and then kind of move the probe, you can definitely see based on the angle of the probe, you can completely lose it. And then you can actually kind of see it every now and then. So it really takes the right angle. You definitely have to have the right amount of lubricant on the probe too, and then to actually see it. So you can definitely see, usually with the, the two follicles, you can see kind of the curvature right between those. So this girl is doing pretty good has some pretty big follicles going on right there. I'm gonna freeze it. And usually, if you have a female that is ready to lay, the follicles can be so big, it can fill the, completely fill the entire screen. As a matter of fact, they can go off of the screen to where uh, the, the follicle doesn't even fit on the screen anymore. So let's take a look at this. And I don't put too much faith in the ultrasound just because it's kind of a tricky technique. You have to be really good at the ultrasound to know what you're doing and to see the follicles and to be sure you have a follicle. So that one looks like we're coming in right at about 20 millimeters. All right, so I want to see what's going on with this pie girl. She laid really late in the season last year, and she's been back on food. As a matter of fact, if most of these are back on food and the follicles are about 20 millimeters, I'm thinking maybe I should pair up one more time before the end of the, the pairing season. And let's see where this one is here. This one... All right, so this girl is still pretty low. So you see there's a follicle right there. And if you actually kind of move it up this way, you can see there's a couple more right there. Just a few, and she's starting to move. <laughs> uh, these aren't quite as big as I thought they were on some of these snakes. I'm starting to think, man, maybe I should uh, use an ultrasound a little bit more. So right about there, I'm going to freeze it. You can see a whole row of eggs right here. So you have one, two, three, four eggs right on the screen right there. So... Yeah, I'm thinking I need to pair up a little bit more this year. <laughs> uh... All right, let's so let's see. This is coming in at 12 millimeters. I thought these were way further advanced than they actually are. So it's coming in 11.2, 12.8, an average of 12.0 millimeters. So I'm thinking maybe I should pair up my ball pythons at least one more time, maybe two more times, which is kind of crazy. All right, so I'm going to try this big old lesser female and see what she looks like. It looks like we're not quite as far along in the season as I had hoped. Which means if I keep pairing up, I could have a really late season, which could throw everything really far behind this year, which is kind of crazy. So let's see, halfway would be about here, and then I want to move up just a little bit like right in here. Kind of like right along the spine and then down. Let's take a look at that one. So this one's further along than any of the other ones, which is kind of wild. So if we actually measure this one, this one is an average of 27 millimeters, which is pretty awesome. This one is coming along really well. All right, I'm gonna try one more snake. I have a big pastel here. We'll take a look at this one. And I'm thinking maybe I should use the ultrasound. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. I don't know about this girl because she's not quite as big as the other ones. So we'll see what this girl looks like. Sometimes I could just hit it and I see the eggs right away in the sides and then sometimes I can't see anything. So this girl looks like she's pretty small too. 
Looks like those are maybe 10 millimeters right there. Huh. Maybe I won't have as good of a season as I thought. <laughs> we'll see here. This is like usually when you first start pairing them up, they're about this big. Maybe 10 or 12 millimeters. All right, coming out right at 10 millimeter average on this pastel. All right, so I'm gonna do one last snake and that is my albino 100% het pie that I'm pairing with my albino pie. Hoping for some uh, albino pied visuals, hopefully at some point. And this girl's been eating really well, looking pretty good. She's a pretty small snake, so I wouldn't think her follicles would be that big right before she lays. And of course her head is right where I need to put the, <laughs> the probe right on her side here. So based on the results that I'm seeing today, it looks like maybe I'll pair up one or two more months as far as what I'm seeing. Some of them are right at 10 millimeters. Some are at 20. So it looks like I still have some pairing to do based on what I'm seeing. All right, so this girl, you can definitely see some eggs right in there. Those look like they're about maybe 18, 20 millimeters. Looking pretty good, maybe a little bit bigger. Suppose we can freeze them and measure. I'm starting to rethink the whole ultrasound thing. <laughs> All right. So let's measure this one. I think I'm going to be pairing up for two more months on some of these girls. The problem is it'll set me pretty far back. That's coming in right at 17 millimeters. So yeah, I'm thinking, you know, some of these girls are at, you know, 10 or 20 millimeters. So it looks like I'm gonna be pairing up my snakes a couple more times and kind of running them through my collection. Based on what I'm seeing, I'm kind of surprised that the follicles are that small in the middle of the breeding season this far into it in February. Because one year I actually had my first eggs in March and then another year I actually had my first eggs in May. So I'm thinking I should probably keep pairing up for another month at least based on what I'm seeing here as far as the the ultrasound results. So that is how I do ultrasound. Let me tell you, this is not an exact science. Sometimes I can look and look and I won't see anything. And sometimes I'll just hit it and I'll see it right away and it'll be really easy and really obvious. But this is the first time where I was really kind of depending on my ultrasound to tell me, hey, I'm really kind of behind schedule as far as where I thought I was with these ball pythons. So as far as the cleanup, I've just been cleaning up the, this is just a water-based gel that you use for ultrasound so you can just wipe it right off your snake and then you can go back in and clean it up a little bit more with water so it's a really easy cleanup doing an ultrasound and if you're interested in one of these ultrasounds to kind of play around with I'll actually post a link below they're like a thousand dollars over on as a matter of fact they're over on Amazon now you can buy them over there with a that comes with the case and the probe and everything for, for right around a thousand dollars which is the cheapest ultrasound <laughs> that I've ever seen and it's a pretty nice little unit and it's it's kind of loud it's got a pretty loud fan in it but I've been using it for years uh, just you know just a little bit here and there over the years never had any kind of a serious problem with it the only thing that's kind of weird on this is when you move the mouse it's not really smooth it kind of jumps around a little bit but you can kind of work around it and I don't think there's a place I haven't even looked to see if there's a place where you can plug in like a USB, I guess there is a USB. Maybe you could plug a mouse in to be a little bit smoother on the mouse. But I've never really worried about it. I just use the little, it's kind of this little, uh, this rolling ball right on the bottom of the screen right here that moves your mouse around. And it's kind of a, 
Kind of a weird little j cursor that's not really smooth on this one. So that is my ultrasound and what I do with my snakes. I'm thinking I should use this ultrasound a lot more from here on out. Probably like near the end of the, the pairing season just to see if I've paired long enough. This is probably the ultimate time to use an ultrasound. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.